is Jess from Sally Tomato and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you how to make my charade bag pattern. There are two sizes included in the pattern. There's a small and then a larger size and the steps will be the same for both sizes. So I'm going to make the larger size today and first we're going to start with preparing the fabric. So I'm going to talk about interfacing and we already installed zippers as a closure, the top closure, and then also a recessed zipper closure. And today we're gonna do zippers a little bit differently. We're going to use them on the interior pockets of the lining to add a little bit more organization inside the bag. So you're gonna learn how to use some hardware. We're going to make a strap out of cork fabric and faux leather. So I'll share some additional tips for sewing with those as well. So you're gonna start with your exterior top panels. So you have two of them out of your main fabric and then also your strap connector piece. And then you're gonna grab your interfacing. So I recommend using a lightweight woven fusible interfacing. And you can kind of feel with your hand which side is the fusible. It has the bumps on it. And then the non-fusible side is the smooth side. So you're gonna take one of your top facing pieces and place the fusible side against the wrong side of your fabric and have all the edges lined up and just smooth it out. So this will add a little bit more stability to the quilt cotton fabric. And over at the ironing board, just gonna give it a good press and make sure that it's fused evenly. And you want to follow the manufacturer's instructions for whichever type of interfacing that you're using. So then you know what heat setting and how long to hold the iron on the interfacing. Okay, so then you repeat for your other top facing piece and then interface the strap connector piece as well. So then you can set those aside. So then take your exterior main panels and fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of each of those two. So after you're done with all of your fusing, you can set your top panels aside and your strap connectors, and then you'll grab your foam pieces. So I love sewing with foam for bags because it adds a lot of body, it's lightweight, and you can crumple it up and it pops right back into shape. So don't be afraid um, to work with the foam, it's really great for the bags. So you're going to take your exterior main panels and place one over each foam piece and align all the edges. And I recommend using a sew-in foam because when we end up turning the bag right side out, if you have it fused to the foam, sometimes those wrinkles tend to stay. Um, so I always just baste it to the foam, either with the stitching or you can use a temporary adhesive spray on the wrong side and that'll help hold it in place. So we are gonna stitch it down together to hold the layers. So you'll just smooth it out, align all the edges and take some sewing clips and clip the layers together. So after you're done clipping the pieces together, we're gonna to take this over to the sewing machine and you're gonna sew all the edges with an eighth inch seam allowance. You can increase the stitch length to about five millimeters long because we're just going to baste it together. So once you have both of your main panels basted to the foam, we're going to move on to preparing the zipper pockets. So grab one of your lining pieces and then also one of your pocket facing pieces. So you're gonna place the pieces right sides together and align that indented section. And this is where the zipper pocket will be at the top edge of the fabric. So I'm just gonna add a couple clips to hold these two pieces together. And then we'll take this over the machine and sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I am gonna turn my stitch length down to two and a half. And you're just gonna sew along that indented section. So then you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut from that corner edge up to the stitching. So just be careful that you don't cut through the stitching, but this is gonna help the fabric lay nicer. 
and we add the notches to each of the corners. And then you're just going to trim the seam allowance down to about an eighth inch wide. And this will just help reduce some of the bulk. So whenever you can, it's always a good idea to trim back some of the bulk of the seam allowance. It just helps later on when you're turning and for the, the structure of the bag itself. So then you're going to take the facing and press it away from the lining. And I'm going to take this over to the iron. You want the facing to be wrong sides together with the lining. And one tip that I recommend is to slightly roll the seam so that way the facing is more towards the wrong side. It gives a little bit of a cleaner look when the seam is slightly hidden towards the back. And you'll do that along the entire piece of the facing. All right, so once you have that pressed, then you'll repeat for the other piece of lining and the other facing piece. So then take your lining pieces for your zipper pocket and you're gonna press the bottom edge of each lining piece a half inch to the wrong side. So I've already went ahead and done this and I've even labeled WS for the wrong side on the back of each piece so that way um, I'm using a light colored fabric and then it's easy reference for that. So I just used a removable pen um, but you could just mark it with chalk too. So, and it's really helpful to have it on your cutting mat and you can just fold it up to the half inch mark on the cutting mat and then bring it over to the iron and give it a press. So you can set aside the upper zipper lining, which is the longer piece. And with your lower zipper lining, you're going to position it with the right side face up and make sure that that fold is along the bottom edge. Take your zipper and you'll want the pull to close towards the right side. And you're gonna align that top raw edge of the zipper along the top raw edge of your fabric. And then you can clip those together. And again, I just wanna mention the Sally Tomato zippers are nylon coils, so they are safe to cut and sew through. And we will be sewing directly over the coil. So any zipper that you're using for this project, make sure that it's nylon. So over at the machine, you're just gonna sew along this top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. And it's always a good idea to back stitch, so don't forget to do that. You'll be putting things in and out of the pocket, so the reinforcement helps. And as you get to the zipper pull, if you're using a wider foot like I am, you can just lift the foot with the needle down so that way it doesn't move and then slide the zipper pull out of the way. Then you can continue sewing. So then you're gonna position your fabric so the zipper is right side up and then your pocket piece is wrong side up. And you'll want to make sure that the zipper tape is flat so the seam gets folded towards the bottom. And then we're just gonna give this a press and we can close the zipper. It's a little bit easier to handle with the zipper closed. So then just press that seam towards the bottom and it is okay if your iron touches the coil, it won't melt um, or wreck your iron, but you just don't wanna hold your iron on the coil very long since it is plastic. And also just a reminder, back in month one, I mentioned that you can stitch over the ends, the raw ends of the zipper, so that way your pole doesn't accidentally slide off. So if you're more comfortable with that, um, then you can definitely do that. So after you have that pressed, you're gonna grab your lining piece with the facing attached, and you're gonna center it over the zipper. So you just wanna make sure that there's equal sides extending past that that seam of the facing. And you'll wanna line up the top raw edge of the zipper with the raw edge of your fabric. And I'm just gonna add some clips to hold it together. And you could certainly use some basting tape here. You could apply some basting tape 
along the raw edge of the zipper and then just stick it to the tape and that would help as well. And I am going to add a couple of pins just to make sure it doesn't shift. So um, another tip to make sure that it looks nice and clean edges is to just make sure that the space between the coil and that seam edge is the same distance all the way across. You can make sure that the facing is tucked to the wrong side. Just make sure everything's arranged nice and neatly. So before we begin sewing this down, just make sure that your pull is inside that indented section. And you're gonna sew the facing edges with an eighth inch seam allowance. So again, as you reach your zipper pull, I'm actually gonna unzip it a little bit so that way it stays out of the way. So here's what it looks like so far. And you're gonna grab your upper zipper lining piece and you're gonna place both of your zipper lining pocket pieces right sides together. Make sure that that folded edge is towards the bottom. And you're gonna align the top edges and then also those side edges and then add some clips to hold it down. Then at the machine, you're gonna sew starting and stopping at that facing seam allowance just across that top edge of the zipper. So don't go past your, that seam or your previous top stitching. Next, we're gonna sew the sides of the pocket closed. So simply just fold away one side edge of the lining and you're gonna sew along the, ed the side edge with a quarter inch seam allowance to seal up the side. And make sure that those bottom folded edges are even. So if for some reason something shifted, that's okay. Um, what I would recommend is to just press one of the folded edges a little bit up or a little bit down since we do have that half inch um, width for the hem to allow for that and any of those adjustments. But everything should line up and mine does, so you'll just sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. So make sure to back stitch when you get to the bottom edge. And then you'll repeat for the other side. So you're just gonna fold away the left side of the lining and it's a little bit easier this time if you turn it around and then sew from the bottom folded edge up to the top. All right, so one zipper pocket is done. You'll repeat the same steps for your remaining lining pieces and your other zipper to create the pocket for the other side of the bag. And you're going to leave one side unsewn, so you'll have the bottom edge open on one half of the lining. And then I'm gonna stitch down this half of the lining with an eighth inch seam allowance to seal up the bottom edge. So the reason why we're gonna leave one side open is because we're gonna turn the bag right side out through the zipper pocket hole. And that way your turning hole will be concealed inside the zipper pocket after it's all done and it'll look super professional. So I'm just gonna go ahead, stitch this side and leave the other side unsewn. All right, next we're gonna assemble the lining pieces. So your zipper pocket should be done, your top facing is prepped and we're ready to put them together. So you're gonna Position your pieces just like this with right sides up. You're gonna take your top panel and align that bottom edge of the top panel with the top edge of your prepared lining. And then line up those side edges as well. And I'm just gonna add some more clips to hold the layers together. And then sew across the top with 3 8 inch seam allowance. And you just wanna be conscious of your zipper pull here and make sure that you feel it underneath your fabric, and then as you sew up to it, we'll make sure that it's out of the way. Okay, so then you're going to press the facing away from the zipper, 
and the seam should be towards the top. And then we can even take this over to the ironing board and just give it a nice press so it's really crisp. So then at the machine, you're gonna top stitch a quarter inch from the seam that you just made. And this will add a little bit of detail and then also just help everything lay nice and flat. So you'll repeat for the other side of the lining and the other top facing piece. And then we're ready to install some purse hardware. So I'm gonna show you how to install magnetic snaps. And this is what's gonna keep the top edge of our bag closed. So there's two halves to the magnetic snap. There's a male side and then there's a female side. And each back side of the snap has some prongs. And this is how the hardware is going to stay installed into the bag. So then take the pattern piece that was included in your pattern for the top facing. And I have the, the full size pattern piece here. And flip your lining over so the wrong side is face up and we're going to mark the placement of the magnetic snap. So this is right on the pattern piece and the easiest way that I recommend to do this is just to align the pattern piece with the side and the top edges and take a removable pen and then just mark where that center of the magnetic snap is. And usually I just flip it over and align the other side too and just mark again just to double check that it's absolutely in the center. So that is the placement for the magnetic snap. So we can set the pattern piece aside. And included with the hardware are some washers. And these will go on the wrong side of the magnetic snap. So you'll notice that there's a hole in the center and two slits. So you're gonna center the hole over the placement mark. And then take your pen and mark each of the slits. And usually I position it horizontally um, so you, the slits will be side by side versus top and bottom. So that way we aren't getting in the way of the seam. So place it horizontally. So next we're gonna cut the slits for the prongs. And there's a couple ways to do this. You could fold your fabric in half with the right sides together and then just take your scissors and cut a small snip in the fabric. Otherwise, I usually use my seam ripper. So I grab a pin and place it at the top of the slit. And I'm gonna use my seam ripper and start at the bottom edge, stick it through the fabric, and then it'll stop at the pin. So that way you make sure that you don't go any further. So that's just a little tip. Then you're gonna take one half of the magnetic snap. It doesn't matter which either half works for this project. And you're gonna poke it through the slits from the right side to the wrong side. Then take the washer and place it over the prongs and push down nice and hard and then you're going to bend the prongs outward. And bending them outward will help kind of distribute some of the bulk of the hardware versus bending them inward then you might have a little bump in your bag. And then I add some permanent glue so E6000 or Loctite are my go-to's. Any permanent glue will work and just add it over the prongs. So as you use your bag, that'll just make sure that your hardware is nice and secure. And then grab a scrap of your fusible interfacing and then place it over the wrong side of the hardware and it's okay if it overlaps the, the lining of the pocket. And we're just gonna iron it over the hardware and that will prevent the fabric from getting scratched from the hardware. So then you'll install the other half of your magnetic snap in the other piece of your lining. And a very important step is to make sure that you unzip the zipper all the way on the piece that is unsewn along the bottom edge of the lining because we will be turning the bag right side out through that opening. So that's essential to have that unzipped. And then we're going to move on to attaching the corner accents onto the front and back panels of the bag. So then take your exterior main panel and then two of your corner accent pieces, which are out of your contrast fabric. And I've written this pattern so that way your contrast fabric can either be a woven fabric, like either cotton or canvas, 
or you could use cork fabric or faux leather. So the advantage of using cork fabric or faux leather is you can leave the edges raw. So for this accent, it's appliqued down on the front, so the raw edge will be exposed. But if you decide to use cotton or canvas in the instructions, step by step, I'll tell you how to finish off that raw edge. So it's just one extra step if you decide to go that route, but sometimes it's fun to use um, contrasting prints or coordinating fabrics from the collection. So you're going to position one corner accent on each corner, bottom corner of the bag, and we're just starting with one main panel here. One thing that I do notice that often happens is these pieces get flip-flopped, and when that happens, they are a little bit longer and have a little bit different shape. It's totally fine if you like that look and you want to have your corner accents that way. Um, but the pieces should be taller than they are wide. So that's the way that the pattern was designed this way. Um, so just something to know and quick measure to make sure that you have them positioned in the proper corners. And I'm going to use some sewing clips to hold each corner accent in place. And you could certainly add some basting spray to the wrong side of the corner accent to help prevent it from shifting if you'd like. So next we're going to take this over to the machine and you're going to sew all the edges with an eighth inch seam allowance for each corner. And I just want to mention too, I am using a contrasting thread so that way you can see where I'm stitching and you can follow along and it's easily visible, but you may want to choose a color that coordinates. So then you'll sew the other corner down the same way. And instead of the straight stitch, if you would prefer, you could have sewn this with a decorative stitch to use some of the decorative stitches on your machine and give it a little bit more dimension and different look that way. So just be extra careful sewing along the curve. And when you sew the side edges and along that cut corner edge, you don't have to be as careful since that'll be hidden inside the seam. So then you'll repeat to attach the remaining corners to the back side of the bag. So I've already went ahead and stitched the corners onto the back side of the bag. For this piece, I actually used the matching thread so you can kind of see the difference. And sometimes the contrast is fun to have a little bit of pop of color and to tie in some of the other colors in the fabric that you're using. So next I'm going to show you something optional. If you'd like, you could add a handmade label. So these are fun, they just add a little bit more of a professional finish to your projects and Sally Tomato offers two different fonts. So this is our sans serif font and then we also have a script font. So just something fun to embellish your project. So now is the perfect time to add the handmade label before any further assembly of the project. What you'll notice on the corners here that are cut, this will be end up being the depth of the bag. So you'll want to make sure that you install your hardware far enough up from the bottom edge so that way it doesn't get folded towards the base. So this is just, if you fold it, you kind of get an idea of where the bottom edge will start. And you can just measure up. And this hardware is installed similar, just like the magnetic snap. So included is a washer, it looks a little bit different. But you're gonna start by positioning the prongs over the washer and see which slits that the prongs are gonna poke through. So for this piece of hardware, it's the second slit in from each side. So you'll position the washer where you want your hardware installed and I'm gonna just install it so it's along the bottom edge. You could certainly measure down from the top edge if you want it there or on one of your lining panels if you want it on the inside. So lots of options. So I'm just gonna eyeball where I want this installed and take my removable pen and mark where those slits for the prongs are. And just as before, I'm gonna take a pin and put it along the top edge before I do my cutting and that will make sure that I don't cut past the slits. Then you can poke your hardware through and on the wrong side 
you'll position your washer over the prongs. And again, I recommend to fold them away from the center and you can iron your interfacing over top just like before. And see, look how nice and shiny it is. And you can choose colors of hardware to coordinate with your fabrics so it all looks really nice and professional. Next, we're gonna prepare the strap connectors. So these are called strap connectors because they attach the strap to the bag. So we have one piece here and you're gonna fold it so the long edges are along the center. So just fold the long edges to the center and give it a good press. And you could certainly take your ruler and a, a marking pen and mark the center of the fabric and then you could just fold the edges to the center if that's a little bit easier for you, if you're a little bit more visual. I'm just eyeballing it here. <laughs> so you're gonna stitch at the machine a quarter inch from each folded edge. And I'm sure you'll notice my raw edges weren't completely in the middle and that's okay. With the iron, you could adjust that, but this will get folded in to, and hidden um, in the inside, so it's just fine. So then you're going to fold the strap connector in half, matching those short raw edges, and then take a scissors and cut along the fold to make two connectors. So it just saves a little bit of time cutting and stitching to do it that way. Then you're gonna take your rectangle rings, and there's one for each connector, and thread it through a rectangle ring, and then fold wrong sides together, aligning those short edges and it'll encase the raw edges on the inside. And then you're just gonna stitch about a half inch from that folded edge and be conscious of the hardware, so make sure it's nice and tight against the fold and that will attach the hardware to the connector. And on most machines, there are guides on the needle plate, so I'm just lining up the fold along the half inch guide and I'm ready to stitch. And then I usually trim my threads as I go just to keep everything nice and clean. And then you can repeat for the other pieces. So you can set your strap connectors aside and now we're ready to assemble the bag. So take your two exterior pieces and place them right sides together and align all the edges. And we're gonna start by sewing along this bottom edge. So just clip the layers of the bottom together and sew together along that bottom edge with 3 8 inch seam allowance. And make sure to back stitch. Then you're gonna open up your exterior so the wrong side is face up. So then you're gonna press that seam open and you can just use your fingers and it is quite bulky so you could also try using a seam roller and that'll help kind of compress the layers. Um, another reason why you wanna just finger press or use a seam roller is because the faux leather is exposed when you open up this seam and you don't want to touch that with your iron because it will melt and stick to your iron. It also is quite bulky and it won't lay very flat. So your best bet is to just use your fingers. We're gonna stitch it down right away. And don't worry, you can fold your bag as you need to now since the foam pops right back into shape and you're gonna stitch from that seamed edge a quarter inch from each side of the seam. So we're gonna sew one side first and then go and sew the other side. And just make sure that those edges don't get caught and everything lays nice and flat. So then you're gonna fold your exterior so the right sides are together. And it's really important to align these corner accents. So make sure that the top edges are even. So I'm gonna add a clip here so that stays in place. And line up your top edge of your bag. And then also the bottom edges should be even. So the fabric is a little forgiving so if 
for some reason, one side is a little bit shifted. Once we start sewing, it'll compress and all go into place where it's supposed to be. So you're just clipping the side edges together and we're gonna sew only the sides with 3 8 inch seam allowance. And it's super important to be back stitching at the beginning and the end of the seam since this is gonna be a lot of stress on these areas of the bag. The side seams need that extra reinforcement. So take your scissors and we're gonna trim back the seam allowance so that way from our stitching line to the cut edge of the fabric will be a quarter inch. And this will just help reduce some of the bulk and help keep the shape, the final shape of the bag. So just be careful that you don't cut through your stitches. We're just trimming a little bit off here, but it will make a big difference. Okay, next I'm gonna show you how to box the corners of the bag. So on these cut edges, you're going to separate the layers and align the raw edges. So you're gonna fold it and make sure that those side seams are aligned and you'll wanna just finger press that end of the side seam so that way it's open. And add a clip to hold it together. And then repeat for the other side. And then you're gonna sew along each raw edge of the corners with 3 8 inch seam allowance. And again, don't be afraid to squish the bag and tell it who's boss, make sure it's out of the way so that way you can have easy access to where you're sewing. And then just repeat for the opposite side. So then we're gonna stitch a second line of stitching an eighth inch away from that first line of stitching on the box corners and that'll add some extra reinforcement. And we aren't going to trim the box corners at all because we want that full seam allowance for that extra support and stability on the seam where there's gonna be a lot of stress on that particular seam. So here's what your bag should look like so far and you can leave it wrong sides out. We're gonna set this aside and we're gonna repeat the same steps for the lining panels. So place your lining panels right sides together and align the bottom edges just like before. And this time we're gonna sew with 5 8 inch seam allowance. So we're gonna use a slightly larger seam allowance and we'll do the same and I'll explain when we sew the side edges. So that way the lining will be a little bit smaller than the exterior and it'll fit nice and snug inside the bag instead of having extra loose fabric. And again, I'm just gonna follow the 5 8 inch line on the machine. So that'll be my guide. Then you can take your scissors and trim the seam allowance to a quarter inch wide. So that'll just help get rid of some of that additional bulk. And then we'll press the seam open. And if you'd like to, you can take this over to the machine and top stitch just like before, but with an eighth inch seam allowance from each side of the seam. So then you're gonna take your linings and place them right sides together. Make sure that that facing seam allowance and edges are aligned. And then clip the side edges together. So this time for the lining, we're gonna start sewing at the top edge with 3 8 inch seam allowance. That's what we used for the exterior panels. And then you're gonna slightly increase your seam allowance up to the 5 8 inch. And then you'll continue down the side edge until you reach the bottom maintaining that 5 8 inch. So you can stitch maybe about a half inch down and then start increasing. Um, so as long as it's just pretty much right away, just a smooth increase. Don't forget to back stitch again. So I just push the fabric so that way I'm in line with that 5 8 inch mark on the needle plate. It seems like a lot, but you're gonna be really happy with the end result. And 
then repeat for the other side. Then you're gonna take your scissors and trim so the entire seam allowance is a quarter inch wide. So that'll just clean up the edges and get rid of some of that bulk again. And this method could be used on other patterns too. If your bag pattern doesn't call for it, um, just read through the instructions and see if you're able to make those adjustments to just have a little bit wider seam allowance. And then we'll box the corners. So just like before, separate the layers at the corners and you can just finger press that other seam open and add a clip to hold it in place. And the same for the other side. And here at the corners, you can do the 3 8 inch seam allowance, just like before. And we'll just trim off that extra so it's a quarter inch wide. It's always a good habit to do that. So now you're gonna turn the lining right side out. So just push the fabric and you can poke out the corners. And now is the perfect time to just double check that you have your zipper pocket unzipped for later. And this piece can be set aside for the moment. Then you can grab your exterior panel and your strap connectors. And with the raw edges aligned, you're going to center one strap connector over each side seam. And you can just add a pin to hold it in place. And just make sure that the hardware is down towards the inside of the bag. Then you're gonna place the lining inside the exterior and start by aligning those side seams. And this will be the first project in this series that we sew a curved edge, but I promise you it'll go super smooth. So just align all the raw edges along the top and add lots of clips. The more clips, the better to make sure nothing shifts. So next we're gonna sew around the entire top edge of the bag and you're gonna simply follow the foot along the raw edges. And if you have a machine that has a free arm, you can remove that accessory tray and set it aside so your bag will just slide right over the end of your machine. Um, but with this machine, I'm just going to maneuver it around and keep it as flat as possible. And you can start wherever you'd like along the top edge, just whatever's easiest for you. Um, you're gonna sew all the way around and make sure to backstitch. And when you get to the strap connectors, just make sure that you're conscious of the hardware and that it's out of the way. And I always like to backstitch over the strap connectors because when you have stuff in your bag, it's gonna be really heavy and you wanna make sure that that's nice and secure. And definitely take your time doing this because this will be the final shape of the top edge of your bag. So. Take your time going around the curves and just making sure that everything stays aligned. So then just backstitch really well when you reach the beginning. And take your scissors and cut little snips along the top edge. So the curve will lay a lot flatter and smoother if you add these small little snips just be careful that you don't cut through your seam. And we are gonna leave the full seam allowance along the top. All right, now for the exciting part. So we're gonna turn the bag right side out. So pull out your lining, and then you're going to reach inside the zipper pocket, and I recommend to just grab the base and pull it through first, because it's the thickest part, and those corner accents. And then you can just work it through with your thumbs. 
So it's real easy to turn it right side out through the zipper pocket so you have a nice big opening. And then just arrange everything in place and push out the corners. And before you put the lining down into the exterior, you're going to want to grab your base support, which is a piece of heavy stabilizer, and insert it through that hole and position it at the bottom of the bag. And that is just going to float in between the layers of the lining and the exterior. And also, before we put the lining down inside the bag, you're going to align the edges, the folded edges of the zipper pocket and just top stitch that opening closed with an eighth inch seam allowance. If you prefer to hand stitch, you certainly can, but the machine is a lot faster and nobody's gonna see it. All right, then you can push the pocket lining back down and arrange the rest of the lining in place. Along the top edge of the bag, you'll just roll the facing down towards the lining side and then add some sewing clips along the top edge. And then you'll top stitch around the entire top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. And here you can start wherever you like. I'm using contrasting thread, so I'm probably gonna start in one of the lighter areas, so when I do my back stitching, you won't see it as much. And if you need to, you can just stop and lift the presser foot and pivot to go smoothly along the top edge. So it does get a little bulky here at the side seam where we have the connector because you're going through quite a few layers. So just slow down and if you feel like you need to, you can just turn the hand wheel over that section and you can just trim up that extra thread tail just really close to the stitching. And the bag itself is complete and the last finishing touch is to add the strap. So I'm gonna grab my pieces for that. So here I have my strap pieces and we're gonna join them together to make one long strap. So the strap will end up being adjustable so you can wear it on your shoulder or you can adjust it so it can be crossbody. So you're gonna take your fabrics and this will be the same for if you're using cotton or the faux leather or cork fabric. We're gonna join them the exact same way. So you're gonna place them right sides together perpendicular to each other and I always let about a quarter inch overhang from each side. So if there's any shifting at all, we'll trim it up so it's perfectly even. And you can add a couple clips to just kind of hold the layers together. And we're gonna sew a diagonal seam from corner to corner to piece the two lengths of fabric. And make sure to back stitch. So now you can remove the clips and then trim the seam allowance on the side edges and along the seam. So you'll have about a quarter inch from the cut edge to the seam. And then you're gonna press the seam open just with your fingers. So you won't wanna iron it again because faux leather can't be ironed and cork fabric is quite bulky and does not take well to the iron. Um, you can iron it, but it won't crease very easily. So you're just gonna finger press it and we're gonna top stitch each side of the seam, just an eighth inch allowance. trim these threads as we go along. The 
So if you're using cotton fabric to create your strap, you'll want to follow the instructions for a couple additional steps. And if you're using faux leather, you're gonna fold it in half with wrong sides together and you're just gonna align those raw edges along the entire length. So like I mentioned before, it can be left raw and this material is great for straps because it's really lightweight and durable. Plus you don't have to add any interfacing and it has a nice sturdy thickness to it already. So after you have the entire strap clipped, you're going to stitch an eighth inch from the raw edges and then you're going to also go back and stitch an eighth inch from the folded edge, so along the entire length of the strap. So back stitch as you reach the end and then we're going to turn it over and sew down the folded edge. And just slow down a bit when you get to that join. So you have that extra layers there in the middle. So then just trim up those threads on the end. And grab your slider buckle from your hardware pack and you're gonna thread the end of the strap from underneath and go over the center bar and back down again. And then you're gonna fold the strap back onto itself so this will be considered the underside of the strap and you'll want to fold it about an inch or an inch a quarter just to make sure that you have enough room to stitch that end down. And I usually just do a single line of stitching and back stitch. You could certainly sew a box with an X in the middle of the box for reinforcement. So it's completely up to you. I'm gonna flip it so the underside is faced up and sew about a quarter inch from the raw edge. And then we'll just trim up those threads again. All right, so the last part is to attach the strap to your bag. So you're gonna have the underside of your strap facing towards the outside of the bag. And you're gonna take your thumb and place it on the underside and follow it along all the way to the end. So then you're gonna take the strap and thread it from the inside to the outside and thread it through so that way the slider buckle is a little bit closer to the rectangle ring. So this is what it should look like. The underside it should be facing the outside of the bag. Then you're gonna take the end of the strap. You can follow your thumb again just to make sure it's not twisted. And you're gonna have those undersides facing each other and you're gonna thread it back through the buckle and you can pull a little bit more through so you have some room to work with. And so the underside of the strap should be towards the inside of the bag now, so you can just follow along with your thumb and you're gonna thread it through from the outside to the inside and then fold it back onto itself. And then you'll stitch in place just like before. You can trim any last minute threads, just clean it up. So thank you so much for sewing with us today. I hope you enjoyed this project and learned something new and are excited to work with these new materials and this pattern. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on the next video in this series and more that Missouri Star has to offer. If you decide to make the charade bag, we would love to see photos, so be sure to share with the hashtag MSQC Show and Tell. Thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.
Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out.